what I'm learning here with tech companies in Europe and in the US and even in Asia, the companies I've been working with, because they're so brilliant in engineering and technology and product development, it blows my mind how they think through that. Um, it means they speak that language really well, but they don't really speak sales that well. And they, so when they get an appointment, they get so excited. Oh my God, they get excited. And for good reasons, they work really hard. And then they get the meeting and they're like, look, can I just show you all the stuff that we built? Because it's so damn exciting, right? And they go in and they do demo and they bah, 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 and, they, and the people sitting there politely. Yeah, yeah, no, nice, nice colors. That looks good. And then, and then they ghost them like a bad date. And then they realize, wow, what happened? They, I thought the demo went well. You know what? We need other products, other features. And I'm like, no, 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 time out, time out. You don't have a problem issue. You don't have a product issue or a feature issue. You, you have a, a process issue around sales. That's really the engineer's dilemma, isn't it? You spend years crafting a perfect product, every line of code, every feature spot on, bursting with excitement to share it with the world. But when you do, crickets. A sound familiar? Well, for AI to gain adoption, you need to know how to put this all in simple terms the customer understands. Jonathan Corsandi of Dewey.eu has worked with tech companies all over the world, and his vast experience shows us how to do it right with the AI tools to help in episode 54, AI B2B Copilots, Stop Tech Talk, Boost Sales by Listening. Jonathan later reveals his framework on delivering a demo that sells in detail. But first, let's start listening to the customer with AI DISC DISC profiling, your customer whisperer. Imagine an AI sidekick that nudges you, psst, speak their language. Transform your sales approach from tech lecture to problem solving conversation by listening to what features matter to your customers with an AI tool helping you to figure it out. That I've been using lately before I get on sales calls with people I really don't know. It's called Human Linker, uh, humanlinkerithink.com. But they have a plugin on Chrome that analyzes their LinkedIn profile and it gives you their disk profile. It tells you what their disk profile is and how they make decisions, how what stresses them out, what makes them feel heard. And you look at that real quick before you get in the call and you go, okay, this is an altruistic, wants consensus and all that. And then, so you, you talk about how this is going to benefit the team. So another one might be highly detail oriented, needs to, like engineering types. You talk about the process. Another one is like high, high driving, just want results, gets overwhelmed by details. You say, well, how they, over the next five months, an extra 60 appointments with the perfect customers, what would that look like for you? Oh, okay. Yeah. They do the math. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what is it going to take to, to make a decision? Well, here's what I need. Blah, blah, blah. You get straight to the point. They love that. They, they love that versus the other person. They're like, well, what's important for you and your team and what are you guys working with right now? So that thing, human linker, if you're into disc profiling, it's, it's very, very interesting. And they also have other tools that lets you write custom emails, generate outreach emails and icebreakers and things like that. Wow. And so powerful to actually have some, I mean, it's just, that is one of the amazing things is it would be so helpful to have that going forward when you're talking to somebody rather than, you know, especially if you're just trying to figure out the style as you go into it. Hey, I try to hack this? it. I tried, I tried to hack it. I ran, <laughs> I ran it on myself and it gave me one profile and said, let me just go rewrite my profile and LinkedIn and describe about me completely differently. And and it didn't change much. Somehow it still figured out I was still the same disc person. So I don't know if it reads my posts and all this other stuff. But anyways, it's fascinating. The disc is actually really brilliant because you're also seeing a persona on a yeah. social profile that somebody presents, which yeah. is cool. Like it's a lot less psychological. It's sort of like, here is, here's who I am. Here's the frame. Come and talk to me. Now, once people reach out to you, we all know that video rules. But how do you send 500 leads a unique video? AI to the Rescue again, a tool personalizing your message to each user while you record one video. Jonathan shows us how to save tons of time with this simple AI tool called Ubiquity. One of the things we'll be adding later is following up on LinkedIn with people as well, because we can take that message and then two things we can do. Uh, there's now an AI tool called uh, Ubiqui, which stands for Ubiquitous, 
where mm -hmm. you can record a video at one time, and then you basically uh, can send it out to like thousands of people. But each time you record the video, you say, Hey, Declan, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you. Here's what I'm thinking about. I looked at your website, blah, blah, blah. it's like one minute. But now I can tell this tool, like there's Declan and there's 500 other people where I'm doing the same message. But when they see the video, my lips are moving. Hey, Declan. Hey, Bill. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Jonathan, whatever. And then I put in the websites that I'm looking at. And then it looks like I just did that video specifically for that person. And I, so I could say, hey, Declan, try to reach you by email regarding your upcoming events. It looks like you're interested, but I'm not sure. Anyways, the reason I'm reaching out is because I was looking at your website and your LinkedIn. And I'm really excited about this one thing you did over here. And I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn. Anyways, let me know if this strikes a chord with you. Hope you're doing well. Bye. That video, right, looks like I did that customized, but now I did it once and now I can send it out to hundreds and that gets high engagement as well. So again, using AI for personalization, not for spamming. Now that we know how to reach out, find people speaking their language, we should put it all into a chatbot, right? That's the answer. Wrong. Jonathan's chatbot experiments have not moved the needle. Instead, he shows us the evolution to AI assistants, AI agents, offering sales role-playing practice, helping you tailor your pitch on the fly, ensuring you're always speaking the customer's language, not engineer feature speak. We'll show you how this practice playground boosts your confidence and your close rates with a live example of one pitchmonster.io that does this with avatars to help you warm up. This one is fun and helps you prepare before you actually get on the call. Do you yeah. use chatbots? Do you find chatbots for uh, B2B and just sort of like in any sort of discovery process on websites? Is there any value mm -hmm. to them? We were exploring it right now for my other business in the States where we have a business that services uh, real estate agents and real estate investors. So we've been in that market for like 13, 14 years now. We've done like different services and different things for real estate agents, basically helping them get more listings. So I'm a little bit on the fence. I'm using, we're using Intercom right now for just customer support and they have an AI tool called Finn, which Finn basically learns based on your interaction with past tickets, but also you can upload PDF documents, products, anything you want, just give it a bunch of stuff to learn, 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 learn. And then it's supposed to be able to just handle all customer requests that have been resolved. And for every resolution, you pay 99 cents. So resolution basically means someone votes it. Say, yeah, that was, that was helpful, you know? So I looked at a number of, all, number of tickets. How many hours do, does my team spend on it? What are the typical issues? What articles do we have that address these things? And could I feed all that into what? one interaction where if I have 300 resolutions a month or a thousand, even, even a thousand, would it be worth spending a thousand dollars a month on resolving a thousand customer service issues? And I think the answer is yes, if I can do it more efficiently. Right. So that's, that's on the customer service side of things. I am curious about chatbots. I haven't used it yet on a B2B, but I am curious in the longer term, like how could you build a chatbot that would basically do all the discovery call stuff automatically, right? Ask all the right questions, guide them, ask spin types of questions, and then measure that against the library and then take them in different places and have a, a language model around that, that would, that would teach them. The next evolution is not so much chatbots as it is assistance, right? Chat assistance or product assistance or discovery assistance that are purely AI, right? You, you, you have a machine learning model that's a generative text kind of interaction and it's smart enough to understand where you're going with what you want. Um, I think that's really interesting. I see some startups here in Paris, uh, to one in particular that's doing a like a role playing. So in voice based role playing for salespeople, where basically you pick up the phone, you call a number or you press the app and then if you are a salesperson applying for a job, then the hiring manager says, okay, interact with this bot and overcome objections. Let me see how you do, right? So now it's basically you're talking to an AI bot that's trying to throw objections your way and then depending, depending how you answer it, it gives you if this, then that kind of a thing. But it's more human, interactive, realist, real life based. Now there's a little bit, there's a time lag between 
what I say and the reply I get back in like two seconds, but it's totally acceptable because that's going to get shorter and shorter, right? But imagine like all the work you could do with salespeople before they get on a sales call to fine tune their objection handling or their pitch or whatever by having this, this AI agent kind of role play with you. Explain me your product and pricing. I set up affiliate programs for people at a $2,500 a month uh, retainer plus a percentage of commission. I love your product and see a clear value. However, I don't think we can allocate budget for this. Well, you've even looked at what I'm presenting here because the budget is based on performance, not on just a consulting gig. Okay. Send me more info over the email. And then imagine if you take that agent and put it into existing companies where they spend so much time on role playing, which means it takes at least two sales reps out of their sales job to role play with each other or several sales rep and a sales manager to do role play because they know role play is so important. So I think that's the evolution of, of, of what you call chat, but I think it's going to be AI assisted conversations and you may not even need a, a, a screen anymore. You're just going to need like a voice thing going back and forth. Wow, that's a really great use of a chatbot, though, for now, because I totally agree, like training, taking people out and actually having it almost be like a tutor mentor. Hey, in the end, we all know it's about the demo. Seeing is believing. Creating features excites the engineer. But you got to remember, just like feature creep hurts software, feature frenzy on a call can really ruin it and overwhelm people who might be customers. So the first step to sales isn't talking about the features, it's doing a bit of discovery and evaluation before you even do a demo. Through real world examples and aha moments, we'll demonstrate how Jonathan's framework has helped tech companies boost their demo to sale conversion rates by many, many percentage points. It's not about dumbing down the tech, it's about smartening up the presentation and listening to the customer. What I'm learning here with tech companies in Europe and in the US and even in Asia, the companies I've been working with, because they're so brilliant in engineering and technology and product development, it blows my mind how they think through that. Um, it means they speak that language really well, but they don't really speak sales that well. And they, so when they get an appointment, they get so excited. Oh my God, they get excited. And for good reasons, they worked really hard. And then they get the meeting and they're like, look, can I just show you all the stuff that we built because it's so damn exciting and they go in and they do demo and they bah, 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 and, they, and the people sitting there politely yeah yeah no nice nice colors that looks good and then and then they ghost them like a bad date and then they really wow what happened they i thought the demo went well you know what we need other product other features and i'm like no 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 time out time out you don't have a problem issue you don't have a product issue or a feature issue you, you have a, a process issue around sales so we we get start getting more and more involved in the discovery phase of things like how do you do a good discovery call and we boil it down to a template that's like three pages on powerpoint but then we infuse it with i don't know are you familiar with spin the spin framework spin selling framework spin so spin was created roughly 30 years ago it stands for a situation problem implication and need payoff and it works really well in tech companies and b2b and now we use AI basically to say, okay, you know the framework, framework. Now analyze our client's company. And then this is our client company. This is our website. This is our LinkedIn profile. This is who our ICP is, who we're trying to sell to. Develop the right spin questions for a discovery call. And then you have the script that's generated by AI but was prompted by common sense, a spin framework, because AI knows the spin framework. It's been around for a long time. And now our clients basically go, okay, I now know what questions to ask when on a discovery call. And then we teach them the discovery calls to discover if there's a fit. And at the end of the discovery call, you said, I think we have a fit. You mentioned these three things. And if you resolve those on the next call, I'd like to show you how we would resolve at least two out of those three questions. Let's talk next. And then you, and you book that. That's the close of the discovery call. So I think once you have the appointment, then you can use AI to kind of develop a script for you to do the right kind of discovery. And then there's tools, depending on how big your organization is, like Gong. Gong is really good for like listening in on your sales calls and then coaching you on how you could do things differently and better and how like the ratio between asking questions and 
being silent and taking notes and intonations and all that, it rates you on your efficiency and based on, and that's a machine learning across many different industries. So if you say, I'm a software as a service for FinTech, it'll be like, oh, we've got hundreds of those calls in our library. Here's what works best. Here's the types of questions you should ask. So that's AI for as you're doing the sales calls and recording your own sales calls. Listen, practice, sell, sounds so simple. Well, Jonathan, having worked with so many engineers, pulls back the curtain on his tech sales framework. He's going to show you the pieces that fit together into a customer-centric selling machine. And for all of those who don't like sales, this is important. You're not selling. You're actually helping the customer make the decision they ask for. There's such a great point there, too, because I noticed I work with a ton of engineers, too. And that, like, I was laughing when you said features, because they always are aware of feature creep. And they're always susceptible to feature, like yeah, if we yeah. don't have it, which is sort of like trying to fill in the dots, but let's, let's go to like the idea of a demo. So how do they start off without leading them into the deep dive into the technology, but actually starting like on a discovery call, listen to like, what are the aspects that your ideal customer actually cares about within your technology? I mean. Some of them do it very linear. How do you get them out of that sort of mindset of, oh, I'm going to be here for 45 minutes and take you through what I as an engineer would want to learn, but I as the customer cares about and nail down into those areas that matter to them? Yeah, so I think what works really well with engineers, types of founders, based on the ones I've worked with, is that you give them a process, a flow chart. They, get, they see that, they go, okay, that's the flow chart. This is how I do a discovery call. This is how I do a demo. These, these are the things I showcase, right? And I, and I don't go further. I don't go to you know the next stop until I have these questions. And so if this, then that works really good with engineers, they, 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 that's how they think, right? So you teach them selling according to a flow chart. They love that. It, and it works really well. And I think eventually it becomes second nature. But it's like me, if I had to learn how to code, I need it. I need a framework. I need something to like help me think about this. Selling is the same thing. It's it's a skill set and it's not so much and an, yeah, of course there's those that are just naturally gifted. It's an art and it's a, you know, don't ask me how they do it. They just do it. But then there's there's really there's a science to selling which you can teach and it's a learnable skill. So going back to your question, how do you do the demo? I typically always recommend like the discovery call is to figure out what's the biggest pain point. Like if you go to the doctor and and you tell the doctor, I have a severe pain in my shoulder and, and then he doesn't really, they, they don't do really good diagnosis and then gives you a bunch of prescription, take these drugs, wear this, this wristband and wear a boot. You're like, wear a boot. I told you my, like, what happened? What's going on? Why am I wearing a boot? You know, the same thing is like, if you don't do a good discovery call, they don't feel heard. They don't feel seen. They don't feel received. It's, it's that there's a light psychological thing here. So when you do that, you go, when you start the demo call, say, Hey, you know what? Remember last Tuesday we talked about, you know, your main three things were this A, B, you know, X, Y, Z. They go, yeah. Okay. So now as a tech founder, I know that the three things they mentioned can be covered with two out of my 20 features. So what do I do? I just show them the two features that will solve their problem. And you go, look, most clients, most people that have these three issues, what we've learned is that it's because of this, this, and this, which we solve with these two features. And it's inter- and that's also it's qualifying too. Yeah. And then they go, okay, yeah. And then and then and then you could probe, you could say, well, once you know we have clients, once they solve these problems, they tend to direct their attention on these other stuff, which you already know you have features that can fix. I'm curious, how does that compare your experience? Is that something you want to address after you've signed up with us and we've solved this problem? Maybe we should look at that in three months from now. Yeah, let's look at that in three months. Right now, let's just solve these two things. Okay, that's it. You shut your mouth. You just solve those two things. You sign them up, you're done. And then customer success team takes over and basically says, all right, when you sign up with Jonathan, you mentioned you want to talk about these. It's been three months. Let's talk about these other things you might be facing. And it really, like, I love what you're saying about using machine learning to actually evaluate and give you feedback on your calls. I've always, especially with really exuberant salespeople, I think they would really do well with an engineering framework. I love taking opposites. So into the pitch, which is 
awesome for a great salesperson, but sometimes yeah. they lose that listening thing. So I would used to, I would do this manually, but listening to my people, how much they talked and being nervous and insecure and all normal human stuff, but yeah. telling them to take a breath and actually the more the client talked, because it's so rare that people feel listened to. And I think that's such great feedback to also be using machine learning to evaluate, or if you don't have the capability, can't afford it, simply just you just watch a couple of your uh, demos and you're going to, uh, for the ones who talk too much, yes. it just stands out and it's a great, great feedback. And if folks, if you want to take a look at what Jonathan is working on, obviously uh, we've known each other for a while, but you go to DIWY, D-I-W-Y dot E-U to yep. get more information. And is there anything else you want to say in closing on AI or just in general? Uh, on, no, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm just really glad you invited me to this chat. I always like geeking out on AI and and, and these kinds of conversations always, always helps me focus on the practicality of things and staying practical, staying grounded. And if anyone's listening that's interested in discussing this further with me, you can go to dwe.eu. You can, we can set up some time. We can have a chat. I'm happy to chat with you. You can see how we work with startups and B2B tech companies. So thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It's been fun.